is this Karen? Hello, everybody. I am Shane. Today we're looking at part one of electronic tongues and acquired taste. <laughs> <laughs> and the vocabulary words are electronic. Electronic. A keyboard is a type of electronic piano. Emperor. Emperor. The emperor ordered his guards to take the man away. Mm. Analyze. Analyze. We used a computer to analyze the data. Similarity. Similarity. I see a lot of similarities between Hannah and Meg. They're both pretty. <laughs> syrup. Syrup. Faye poured chocolate syrup all over her ice cream. So we're talking about something really, really interesting. I've never heard of it before. Electronic tongues. Yeah, when I heard of electronic tongues, I was thinking maybe when we have a problem with our tongue and you, you can take it out and replace, replace it, it with an electronic one. But that's not what's happening <laughs> here. Right? When will we need electronic tongues? So it's going to be something that we can use to analyze liquids or mm. specially uh, like solids that have been specially um, do something special to them to make them kind of like liquids. Okay. To look for chemicals mm -hmm. and to find out what properties these liquids have. Okay, so you don't actually put people's lives at risk. You can just use electronic mm -hmm. tongues to do that. Right, so one practical application of this would be testing water. The water quality, to right? To see what water quality is. And yeah. then even in science and research, they'll be able to test urine mm. to find out if, there are, uh, if there's cancer present oh. in the urine, because you can detect that. So. Wow, that's pretty interesting. I guess that's a really, really good invention. Although putting a tongue in urine does not sound good, <laughs> kind of gross, but it's not an actual tongue, right? It's an electronic tongue. Okay, let's learn more about this electronic tongue. It's quite interesting. I'm so thankful for our technology these right? days. That's right. Enjoy. Electronic tongues, an acquired taste. In ancient Rome, food tasters were once hired to make sure the emperor's food was safe to eat. A new technology under development promises to do that and so much more. Today's lesson is called Electronic Tongues and Acquired Taste. Part 1. Hello everyone, my name is Jeff. And I'm Mike, and I don't know what we're going to be talking and reading about in this article. Electronic tongues. This is not something I have ever heard of, but obviously it's coming to us from the world of science and technology. We're taking tongues, yes, tongues uh, in your mouth that you use to talk and lick things and taste things and, you know, do mouth stuff. And then we're making them electronic. And then we're going to have to learn to like them. That's very, very That's what strange. it means to acquire a taste, by the way. Mm. And yes, this is also kind of strange because I've never seen an electronic tongue. No, I don't even know how that would work. But obviously it's a machine because we have this adjective electronic right there at the beginning. And uh, something that's electronic, well, you might know the word electric, anything that uses electricity, whether it's a battery or a light that you plug into the wall or a little robot toy that you play with. If it uses electricity, that's one way it's getting power. But if we add this electronic to a description of a machine, we're talking about, yes, something that uses electricity, but the electricity not only powers the machine, but little computers, little microchips, little electronic brains inside the machine. So electronic things would be things like computers, or if you have a very complicated robot toy, that could be an electronic toy as well as an electric toy. But if it's electronic, it's using microchips. It has some processing power like a computer. For example, a keyboard is a type of electronic piano. It uses microchips and electricity to make sound that sounds like a piano, but it makes the sound in a different way. So, we have a tongue, we use it all our lives to taste food. Why do we need a machine tongue, and how does that work? Well, let's start to get to the bottom of that right now. Let's start by talking about 
ancient Rome. Seri- sure. Seriously. If I I'm want not, electronic I'm not, things, I go I, to... There you go, Mike. I, I know it's strange, but it's true. This is where we're starting. Get this. In ancient Rome, food tasters... They would have to use their tongue to taste the food. Okay. In ancient Rome, in ancient Rome I should say, food tasters were once hired to make sure the emperor's food was safe to eat. So that's where we're going to get started in ancient Rome. Now, in ancient Rome, there was an emperor, a Caesar. Now, what do these words mean? What does the word emperor mean? Well, if you are an emperor, you are the head of an empire, okay? You're kind of like a king or a queen, an empress, but more. You're even more powerful. So not only do you control one country, but also other territories, okay? For example, the emperor ordered his guards to take the man away. Yes, the man would be called an emperor. The woman would be called the empress. Anyways, a new technology under development promises to do that and so much more. Yes, you can taste food just like they did there in ancient Rome, but a new technology is going to actually improve on that big time. That sounds great. I'm not sure why we need it, but I'm sure we'll find some good reasons in the next part of the article that we'll be reading after this break. Hello, 大家好,我是Hanny. 今天的课文标题是 Electronic Tongues and Acquired Taste. 好,我们先来看单字 Electronic 它是形容电子的 或是使用电子装置的 那么electronic tongue 就是指电子舌 又简称为e-tongue 就像我们看到e-book 电子书 它就是由electronic book 来的简称 好,那顺便补充相关的词性哦 我们用electrical electrical 就可以用来形容电的 跟电有关的 那么electricity electricity 它是名词,表示电,电力或是电能。好,另外标题里面用到 an acquired taste, 它字面的意思是取得的味道。那它可以用来表达后天培养出的喜好, 习惯之后才会喜欢的东西。像有些人就觉得臭豆腐算是 an acquired taste, 一开始你可能不喜欢它的味道,觉得臭臭的,可是你慢慢就爱上它的滋味。好,课文一开始提到说, 古罗马时代曾经有雇用试吃食物原来确保皇帝吃的食物呢是安全可以食用的那么现在正在开发的新科技电子蛇它不但可以帮人们来检测食物甚至还有其他很多功能哦好这边有一个单字叫 Empress E-M-P-R-E-S-S Empress表示皇后或是女皇 那么Empire E-M-P-I-R-E Empire表示帝国 解华课文中 Electronic tongues An acquired taste Although the human tongue is sensitive to a huge range of flavors there are limits to what we can taste Electronic tongues are a type of tool that can be used to analyze liquids or specially prepared solids in greater detail. Different tongues use different methods for analyzing, including measuring the ways that light or electricity travel through a sample. Okay, let's talk about the human tongue and how we taste things. We use our tongue, and although the human tongue is sensitive to a huge range of flavors. There are limits to what we can taste, okay? And apparently, an electronic tongue is going to solve this. I think that's what they're getting at. Mm-hmm. Yeah, something like that. But I don't think we'll be using it to enjoy our daily meals or, you know, to taste things for the first time. This would be more of a scientific way of using an electronic tongue. It says, electronic tongues are a type of tool that can be used to analyze liquids or specially prepared solids in greater detail. Okay, so this would be for food scientists, nutritionists, people who look at food on a scientific level. This is not to take to a restaurant with you to enjoy your food alongside. No, but scientists, they need tools and machines like this 
to analyze things. This verb to analyze basically means to look into in great detail, to learn a lot about something, to take all the data and information you can find and look at it, study it, compare it to other data inform and information, and then by analyzing things, you hope to learn things, discover things, and make basically make your knowledge greater. So by analyzing data, we can learn from it and then make new discoveries. For example. We used a computer to analyze the data. Well, that'll save some time. There you go. So there are certain things that we,、mm -hmm. things with tongues, can taste.、Right. There are also things that we can't taste, and then there are those things that we shouldn't taste, like poison.、Uh -huh. But you know what? An electronic tongue, they're they're not going to have any of these drawbacks. How cool! Yeah, different tongues. We learn next. Use. Different methods for analyzing, including measuring the ways that light or electricity travel through a sample. Yeah, try to use your tongue to measure how light or electricity travels through a sample. You won't be able to do it. Yay, electronic tongues. Anyways, folks, with that, it's time for us to take a break. But don't go away. We'll be right back after this. 人类的舌头对很多味道都很敏感，不过我们能够品尝的东西有限，像有毒的东西呀、啊、河水啊、尿液等等这些东西，你总不可能叫人类用舌头来检测吧？好，那现在有了电子舌这种工具，就可以更详细的用来分析液体啊，或是固体等等。那我们来看单字 analyze。Analyze 就表示分析，它是一个动词。刚刚 Jeff 老师说到，人的舌头能够品尝的东西有所限制，可是电子舌就没有这样的缺点。好，老师用到 drawback 就表示缺点、短处或是不利条件，它是拼作 d r a w b a c k drawback。那么 ，Mike 老师提到说，电子蛇可能主要是给科学家或者是营养学家用的，不是给一般人给我们带去餐厅用的。好，那老师这时候用到 nutritionist， nutritionist 表示营养学家、营养专家，它是拼作 n u t r i t i o n i s t， nutritionist。接华课文中 ，electronic tongues， an acquired taste。These tongues can be used to search for particular chemicals within a sample and to compare the similarities and differences between different specimens. Beyond this, electronic tongues can be used for advanced tasks like testing the water quality of rivers or even to test urine for signs of cancer. Mainly, these tools are helpful for analyzing things humans couldn't or wouldn't want to taste. For example, imagine a company experimenting with how to make a cough medicine taste like banana. It would be unsafe and gross for the same person to test 100 different types of banana cough syrup. Okay, everyone, let's learn some more about electronic tongues. Okay, these are high-tech tongues that do run on electricity. But there's even more to them. Anyways, more on these electronic tongues. I put that in quotes because they're not really tongues. Anyways, these tongues, in quotes, can be used to search for particular chemicals within a sample and to compare the similarities and differences between different specimens. So maybe a human tongue, when tasting food. Can figure out the ingredients and compare. Oh, how something tastes to something else, and they might be able to do a pretty good job. But will they be able to do what an electronic tongue can do? No, electronic tongues can do unbelievably specific things. They can search for particular chemicals within a sample, and on top of that, they can compare directly compare the similarities and differences between. Different things. By the way, here we have the word similarity to talk about. It's a noun. When you're talking about similarities, you're talking about how things are alike, how they're almost the same. For example, I see a lot of similarities between Hannah 
and Meg. Beyond this, it says, electronic tongues can be used for advanced tasks, like testing the water quality of rivers, or even to test urine for signs of cancer. Things that we wouldn't want to use our own tongues to test. Besides which, if we tested river water, we might say it doesn't taste good, but we couldn't say what chemicals or what pollutions in there. The very intelligent electronic tongue, it could. Yeah, and these electronic tongues apparently have no problem dealing with urine. You should never ever taste urine, which is. It's liquid waste that comes out of your body, but a doctor might want to test that. No, the doctor does not want to taste it. The doctor is going to want to test it, and apparently doctors can use these electronic tongues to test urine to see if someone is sick, maybe with cancer or something like that. Anyways, mainly these tools are helpful for analyzing things humans couldn't or wouldn't want to taste. Like urine. Uh huh. For example, imagine a company experimenting with how to make a cough medicine taste like banana. Okay, that's a possibility. A lot of cough medicines. These are those thick, thick medicines, liquid form that you take when you have a cold. Often they're kind of grape or cherry flavor or something like that. So, what about if they wanted a banana flavored cough medicine? Well, they could, you know, experiment like you're just playing around in the kitchen. But who knows what they'll find? It says it would be unsafe. And gross for the same person to test 100 different types of banana cough syrup. But on the upside, that、yeah. person might never cough ever、That's、again. That's true. They would probably have a very healthy winter after taking that much cough syrup. But that would be kind of gross. Cough syrup. Now, syrup. This is a noun. This is the form that this medicine comes in. Why do we call it cough syrup? Well, it's for your cough. <coughs> But it's a syrup. A syrup is a thick, usually sweet liquid. When we think of syrup, generally we think of something sweet that we might use in baking or putting on desserts. Think of maple syrup, that stuff made from the sugar from a maple tree. You pour that thick brown liquid over your pancakes and other sweet desserts and dishes like that. So the syrup is usually something that's been boiled down, so it's thick and generally sweet. For example, Fay poured chocolate syrup all over her ice cream. Good thing it wasn't、mm. chocolate cough syrup. That wouldn't have worked. Put that, that well, on your ice no, cream. Bad idea.、No. Anyways, folks, with that, today's lesson has come to an end. And it's time for us to say bye bye. <coughs> 好，课文提到电子蛇可以用来寻找样品里面特定的化学物质，那也可以用来比较不同样本之间的异同，而且呢，它还可以用来检测。河流的水质，甚至是检测这个尿液来找出癌症的迹象等等。所以说啊，这些工具它可以帮忙分析人类没办法或是不想品尝的东西。课文就举了一个例子，假设某一间公司它要实验一种口味像是香蕉的这个咳嗽药，那你如果叫同一个人来试一百种不同的香蕉止咳糖浆，这样不但不安全，而且好恶心哦，你可能喝不到十种就吐了。好，那我们最后来看两个单字 ，similarity。Similarity， 它是名词，表示相似之处或是类似。那么 ，syrup，syrup syrup 表示糖浆或是药用糖浆，像 maple syrup 就表示枫糖浆。那么文中用到 cough syrup 表示止咳糖浆、感冒糖浆。好，那么看补充单字 urine，urine urine 表示尿液。那么 specimen specimen 它的意思跟 sample 差不多，表示样本，还可以用来指标本。好，再看 gross gross 可以用来形容令人恶心的，让人觉得非常厌恶、讨厌的。好了，那么以上是这个讲解，同学别走开，马上回来哦。大家好，我是 Hanny， 欢迎收看我们的文法单元。今天要介绍的文法重点有五个。第一个是 be sensitive to 加上名词，第二个是 a range of 加上名词，第三个是 what 引导名词短句，第四个是 imagine somebody or something 加上动词 ing， 第五个是 wh 疑问词加上不定词。好，我们先来学 be sensitive to 加名词
。形容词 sensitive， 它是形容敏感的、灵敏的，或者是容易受影响的。那么 be sensitive to 加名词就表示对什么敏感，对什么灵敏。举例来说。Mel is highly sensitive to cigarette smoke. Mel 对烟味很敏感。好，那接着我们来学 a range of 加名词。a range of 加名词可以表达各式各样的什么。那么 range 的前面可以加上形容词，像是 huge, wide, whole, broad, full 等等来修饰。举例来说。The shop sells a wide range of skincare products. 这间店有卖各式各样的护肤产品。护肤产品。好，那我们接着来学 what 引导名词子句。疑问词 what 可以用来引导名词子句，让这个子句扮演名词的角色。那么 what 主词加动词，在句中它就可以当主词、当受词或是当主词补语用。那这时候 what 就相当于 the thing that。或是 the things that 表达什么什么的事物。举例来说 ，I really appreciate what you did for me. 我很感激你为我所做的事。那在这个句子当中，这个疑问词 what 所引导的那个子句 ，what you did for me， 你所为我做的事，这就是一个名词子句，然后用来当受词，也就是当动词 appreciate 的受词。好，接着我们来学 imagine。Somebody or something 加上动词 ing， 动词 imagine 它有想象的意思。那当我们说 imagine somebody or something 加上动词 ing， 就是说想象某人或某事物在做某事。举例来说 ，Jenny imagined herself living in a beautiful castle。Jenny 想象自己住在一座美丽的城堡里面，和王子一起过着幸福。快乐的日子，天天都有开心的舞会可以参加，然后一回到现实，每天都只有补习班可以参加，好可怜哦。好，那我们最后来学 W H 疑问词加不定词。W H 疑问词后面接不定词，也就是接 to 加原形动词的话，它可以形成名词片语，在句中当主词、受词或是主词补语用，像是 I don't know what to say。就是说，我不知道该说什么。那这时候 ，what to say 是名词片语，它在这边当受词用，也就是当动词 no 的受词。以上是今天重点整理，我们下次见喽，拜拜。Hello, everybody. Welcome to English in Action. I'm Shay. I'm Holly. Ah, we're today's topic is, hey, I get your meaning. I agree with you. How do I express it? Yeah, it's really useful, right? It's really useful. Because I often hear people say, oh, I agree, I agree. Yeah, I agree. But actually, when you say it, it's really useful. Yeah, 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 it's really I know what you mean, but I can't help it. It's so delicious. All right, let me have some of that. The truth is, you definitely don't need to lose weight, so you can eat all the fried chicken you want. Really? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> This is pretty useful, right? Yeah. Mean. 这边这个动词其实就是你的意思是什么？ Right. 对，所以我知道你的意思是什么。Yeah. 那还还有用什么可以就是讲这个？ I see your point. Oh, okay. Point. Yeah. 点，我懂你的点。Yeah, you right? Go, right, exactly. So it's exactly the same in Chinese and English. I see your point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Or I hear you. Oh, I heard you. I know what you want to say. Yeah. So I hear you. Of course, doesn't mean I just hear. Not really listening. Yeah. Is I listened, but I also know what you want to say. I hear you. I hear you. Okay, let's review. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. I see your point.、Mm. I see your point. I hear you. I hear you. All right. So if you don't know how to say it in English, if you don't know what he means or what she means or what anybody means,、mm. then 靠我们就对了。